Hi, this is Paul from FinishYourSong.com and in this video I want to have a look at one of the useful features that got added into Cubase 8 and that's the Plugin Manager. Previously you had two choices with plugins in Cubase. You could either order them by manufacturer or you could order them by function which didn't always work, particularly with third-party VSTs if they weren't classified in the way that Cubase was looking for. So in Cubase 8 we got the plugin manager added and this enables you to sort them how you like regardless of manufacturer, function, what have you. And it sits on the devices menu as plugin manager. And what you've got is two tabs. There's one for all your effects and one for your instruments. At the bottom you can see your path settings for the VST2 plugins. Your VST3 plugins by default go into a standard location so you don't have to worry about those plugin paths. Um, and what you do is you... this is the default um, which comes up. So this is how Cubase has organized my plugins for me. And as you can see, basically it, it's gone for its own plugins in their own folders, and then it's dumped everything else into different folders. Um, the Korg synths that I have, the legacy ones, default into their own folder, which is actually an improvement on the way they used to install in the old system because they had a nested series of plug of folders that it was quite bizarre. I've not bothered with trying to set up my own list here because um, I've not got that many um, and I've got quite a few but I've not got that many and I can always just scroll down the list to find what I want and in some ways it's convenient to have Cubase's own internal plugins all in one folder even if it's called synth but where I have taken advantage of this is on the effects because I've got a lot of effects and as you can see they're, they're organized in a kind of random way but it's a random way that that makes sense to me so what I've done is I have organized some by manufacturer so all my T-Rex, Gearhouse, Korg, um, Slate Digital plugins are in their folders and I've organized other things by function or by instrument um, that, it's just how it makes sense to me um, to use this all you have to do is to click plus and it will open up an empty palette for you to drag plugins into you can start with all the plugins added and you can copy the current collection if you want to make it a subset now where you might want to do that is if you were for example going to have a subset that you used purely for mixing or for mastering then you could make those plugins purely available at that point um, and this shows what you can do I have the two, I have the default which is the way that Cubase set it up with everything nicely in its own folders and then all the plugins that it didn't recognize or I can switch to my own which is organized you know you could, it, it's very simple functionality you just click on that for a, a new folder and you call this example and there's your example folder and then you can drag that down to wherever you want to put it you want it to go there and then you can just drag effects into the example folder so it really is that simple and then you can get rid of the, the folder that way. The one thing that this won't do is when you get a new plugin it won't add it to your collection so you can buy a new plugin and you load your plugin um, collection and look at it and think well, where's my new toy and the new toy isn't there. So what you do then is you go to the toggle the list and this shows you those plugins which you have which aren't in the collection. Now 
the Slate Digital Virtual Channel isn't loaded because I've actually got the VST2 and VST3 versions installed. And so over here we've got the Virtual Mix Rack which is where the VST3 version of the Digital Channel and the Digital Mix Bus exist. So I don't need the VST 2.4 versions in my list because I'll just load the virtual mix rack and they're there. Um, but I recently uh, shelled out the grand sum of I think it was $19 for the Maserati Group plugin. And uh, if I was just to go here and search that Maserati Group plugin, you see it's bringing up the PDE there, but um, which is me by the way, that's my initials. But if I was to look anywhere in here, I wouldn't find it because it ain't there. Mastering. Well, if they put it as mastering, I'm not actually going to, to think of it in terms of mastering. What I want to do is go back to my device, plugin manager. What I want to do is I, I, I'm going to use that as a group effect. So, looking down my um, list of, of formats, where am I going to put it? It's not an amp simulator, it's a mobile distortion base. I guess, for want of a better place to put it, I'm going to put it in effects. Now, I've already got the Chris Lord Algae effects there. Um, so I'm just going to grab that stereo, bring that across. I'm not going to bother with the mono because all of my group tracks in Cubase are stereo tracks. So we'll just have the Maserati group. And if I now come back to there and I go into effects, there it is. There it is. And uh, you can also hear that it's now affecting because I've uploaded it on the mic channel. So <clears throat> we'll bypass that. And uh, <laughs> But there it is. So it's that simple. And I don't have to hit save. It will keep this plug in now in that group, in that collection. So it's a bit of work to set it up at the beginning. But it's a great way to organize your plugins and because you can have these different collections what you can have is a subset you, you can have all your favorites in one one place and you can say right well these are my go-to plugins um, and I'm just going to use them which you know there's different schools of thought on, on having loads of plugins. I've, I've ended up buying loads just to get a few decent ones. But then again, anybody who follows this channel will know that uh, I'm not an advocate of paying full price. Uh, as I say, I only paid $19 for this particular plugin because it was on sale. And and it was kind of the one thing that was kind of missing was was, was a, a quick and easy group stage plugin. Uh, I've got some channel strips and I'll be looking at channel strips in a future video but I, I just liked the idea of something that was just tweaked to uh, to sit with the different groups. It's very much the way I work if you've watched my previous videos you know I like to bring all the instruments into a group channel and then those group channels into an output channel so having something that would kickstart my processing on the group channel give me some ideas it seemed like a good idea and for $19 well you can't be stung can you anyway enough about that um, that's the plugin manager in Cubase 8 definitely a worthy addition to um, the setup features in Cubase allowing you to work the way you want to work rather than in, in the fixed and rather rigid ways that Cubase has previously presented plugins to you on the, the, the inserts and sends over here um, and I rather like it and so until next time you take care of yourselves